what's up fantasy managers this is the fantasy red zone this is our player pause episode for thursday night football it's our version of start or sit i'm doing the away team which is the minnesota vikings tyler's doing the home team which is the philadelphia eagles if you have players playing in those games i'll let you know who to start or sit in seven seconds So let's jump right into this with the quarterback, Kirk Cousins. Last year, Kirk Cousins played the Eagles in Philadelphia in Week 2. Kirk Cousins' stats in that game was 27 completions on 46 attempts. That's 58%, 221 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. He was sacked twice in that slobbernogger of a loss. But the Eagles' secondary this year lost Marcus Epps and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in free agency. And also, their defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, is now the coach for the Arizona Cardinals. Experts are expecting like a regression in the secondary this year. And Mac Jones threw for 316 yards on three touchdowns against that secondary last week. That dude scored 25 fantasy points without Jacoby Myers and Devontae Parker. So Kirk Cousins have won four out of five and has thrown 17 touchdowns on 12 interceptions in nine career games on Thursday night, which averages to one and a half touchdown and one interception for every Thursday night game. Kirk Cousins scored eight points against the Eagles in 2022, but right now I believe the Eagles secondary is not peak 2022 form. Cousins have weapons like TJ, KJ, JJ, and rookie JA. I believe that he will put up quarterback two numbers play if you need to. So now let's tackle the running back, Alexander Madison. So last week, the Eagles held the Patriots running game to 76 yards on 22 attempts. That is little over than three yards per carry. So now in the Vikings game for last week, Madison ran the ball for 11 times and 34 yards, which is just 3.1 yards per carry. And he played 73% of the snaps. He also had three receptions for 10 yards and had a four yard touchdown reception, but he was fifth in targets. So out of the 73 snaps played, he touched the ball 14 times and totaled 44 yards, but luckily he was able to score a touchdown. The rushing efficiency has been a concern, and it's hard to get a lot of receptions when the Vikings have a solid wide receiver core. So last year, the Eagles were top 10 in opponents' rushing attempts. Opponents normally fell so far behind, they had to abandon a run and just start passing the ball. So they didn't rush a lot against the Eagles' defense. And the Vikings are already a pass-first team. With the Eagles beefing up their defensive line, the hope is that Madison gets between five and seven receptions. I pause on Alexander Madison. Now for the wide receiver, Justin Jefferson. So last week against the Buccaneers, Justin Jefferson had nine receptions on 150 yards and zero touchdowns on 12 targets. That's a similar stat line from 2022. Justin Jefferson also averaged 16 yards a catch. The struggle is Justin Jefferson is still now scoring but still doing well in other aspects of the game. He had seven receptions on 10 targets for 138 yards in the first half against the Buccaneers. Kirk Cousins had a difficult time staying clean in the pocket, and he turned the ball over three times. You can't throw Justin Jefferson the ball when you're turning over the ball, and that's why his stat line stalled in the second half. Jefferson's stat line the last time he played the Eagles in 2022 was 648 and zero, but on 12 targets. But still, he had 12 targets. Darius Slay shut down Jefferson, but Cousins kept throwing him the ball. So it doesn't matter what the defense does. Jefferson is still going to lead his team in targets on Thursday. And what we do around here, we chase the targets. Plus, that game last year was before TJ Hawkinson was added to the team. And then the Vikings went and drafted Jordan Addison. Those added weapons favor Jefferson against defenses. I'm sure no one's asking this question since Jefferson is a consensus number one draft pick, but play Justin Jefferson. (laughs) So let's talk about the other wide receiver, Jordan Addison, rookie from USC. In his rookie debut last week, he had four receptions on 61 yards and one touchdown on six targets. He played 56% of the snaps. He did exactly what the Vikings drafted him to do. Addison had a 39-yard touchdown. He just ran through that zone coverage and he took off the top. It was a beautiful third down play. Addison has taken the Adam Thielen role, and defenses have to worry about his speed. He tied KJ Osborne for third on the team in targets with six, but he had one more reception and 30 more receiving yards in KJ. If I had to guess, I would say Addison is going to take the 2022 Adam Thielen targets away from KJ Osborne. So the Eagles gave up 316 receiving yards through the Patriots last week, and I think Addison's talent is going to take advantage of that Vikings passing game. Hey man, Jordan Addison has scored a touchdown and every single NFL game that he's played in. So, uh, yeah, play play Jordan Addison. And last but not least, the tight end, TJ Hawkinson. Eagles are 32nd in the league for giving up points to tight ends. Tight end Hunter Henry had five receptions for 56 yards on one touchdown on six targets against that Eagles defense last week. 
Hawkinson had eight receptions for 35 yards on zero touchdowns on nine targets, and those nine targets were second on his team, only behind Justin Jefferson. He had an 89% catch rate, which is elite status. He is a 6'5", 248-pound big dude who is a big target, and he plays 75% of the snaps. This guy ended up as tight end five, but only having 35 receiving yards. In a PPR format, he still scored over 10 points last week. When the Vikings offensive line started to break down, you could see Cousins just looking to the first wide receiver closest to him, and it was always Hawkinson. He was just dumping it off, dumping it off. And that's good to see because the Vikings offensive line is going to have their hands full with the Eagles defense on Thursday night, and Cousins' outlet appears to be Hawkinson. So what I'm saying to you guys is to play TJ Hawkinson. And that's my player pause for this week. If you had any doubt for these five players that I just went over, I bet you this video can help you decide either to play or pause. Tyler's going to come out with his player pause for the Philadelphia Eagles later this week. I hope we earned a subscription. I hope you got a like. Don't be shy and leave a comment. I'll see you guys later this week. Deuces.